Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's find out if we understand the basic things about capacitors. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a capacitor that has a certain amount of capacitance, we'll call it C initial, and we load up some charge, which means we have to connect it to a battery, we allow charges to flow onto the capacitor, and now we disconnect the battery so that we have charge on the capacitor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the plates and we're going to move them apart so that the distance goes from the distance D between the plates to the distance 2D between the plates. And the question is, how much work does it take to do that? Well, it definitely does take work and the reason for that is because on one plate we have positive charges, on the other plate we have negative charges, they attract one another, so by moving the plates apart you actually have to force that, you have to push against it because you have to push against that force of attraction. So it definitely will take work. The idea is, let's figure out what the energy is on the capacitor in this situation, what the energy will be at the end. Presumably there will be more energy because you didn't work to pull the, the plates apart. And then the work done will be the difference between how much energy the capacitor has at the end minus how much energy the capacitor had in the beginning. Also key to understanding is to try to understand what actually changes about the capacitor when we pull the plates apart. So we may want to ask the question, what changes? And we want to think about what are some of the things we want to consider about what changes. So perhaps does the electric field change? Does the voltage across the, the plates change? Does the capacitors change? Does the charge change? What on the capacitor changes when we pull the plates apart? And maybe one more thing, does the energy change? And at this point, let's see here, we definitely do know that the energy is going to change because it does require work to pull the, the plates apart. On the charge, we can say that doesn't change. The reason why the charge doesn't change is there's no way for the charge to go anywhere because it's not connected to anything. There's no way for any additional charge to come onto the capacitor. So we can say that no, the charge doesn't change. Does the capacitance of the capacitor change? And the answer is yes, it has to change because we know for a physical capacitor that the capacitance is equal to epsilon sub naught times the area divided by the distance between the plates. So if the distance increases, the capacitance must therefore change, decrease in this case. So we know that the capacitance changes. Well, we also know that the capacitance can be defined as being equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage it required to push that charge on there. So Q doesn't change, we established that, but C changes. If C changes, V must change as well. So we know that V changes. And finally, does the electric field change? Now, when we think about the equation for the electric field, remember that in a capacitor, the electric field was equal to the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, which was equal to the charge divided by epsilon sub naught times A. So you can see that the electric field only depends on the amount of charge you have on the capacitor, on epsilon sub naught, which is a constant, and the size of the plate, which also remains constant. So if nothing here changes, the electric field doesn't change either, so we can say that does not change. So the only three components on the capacitor that changes will be the voltage across the plates, the capacitance of the capacitor, and the energy stored onto the capacitor. So now we're ready to go ahead and try to figure out what was the initial energy and what was the final energy. So now we have to remember the equation we used to calculate the energy of a capacitor. And the equation we used was the energy is equal to one half the charge on the capacitor times V. So that means that the initial energy on the capacitor, E initial, is going to be equal to one half Q, which doesn't change, but V does change, so we can write V initial which means that the final energy, energy final, could probably be written as one-half Q times V final. So it may come down to understanding how does the voltage change. Well, let's see here, there's probably two ways in which we can look at that. First of all, we know that the voltage and the capacitor will change 
uh, inversely proportional to one another. But if we don't know how much the capacitance changes, oh yes we do, we can figure it out this way. So there's actually two ways in which we can do it. The first way is to like, take a look at this. Take this equation and say, all right, how much does the capacitance change? If we double the distance, that means the denominator becomes bigger, we have half the capacitance. So we can say that C initial is equal to epsilon sub naught times A over D, and that C final is going to be equal to epsilon sub naught times A over 2D, which can be written as one half times epsilon sub naught a over d, and since this is equal to the initial capacitance, the final capacitance therefore is equal to one half the initial capacitance, and I got one too many lines in there. There we go, that's how I want to write it. Okay, so now we've established how the capacitance changes. Next, we can say, well, voltage is going to be related to capacitance as follows. We can say that voltage initially is equal to charge divided by capacitance initially, and I keep wanting to put that little line in there, we don't want that there, okay. So we can then say therefore V final will be equal to the charge divided by C final, and C final is one half C initial, so this is equal to Q divided by one half C initial, which is equal to two times Q over C initial, and there I go again, putting that little line in there, there we go. Now, Q over C initial, let's see here, that's equal to V initial. So this is equal to 2V initial. So V final is twice the initial voltage. So V final is equal to 2 times V initial. Now that we know that, we can go up here and say E final is equal to 1 half Q times V final, and V final is equal to twice V initial. So that's equal to 2 times V initial, which is equal to 2 times 1 half Q V initial. And of course, 1 half Q V initial, that's equal to the initial energy, which means that energy final is equal to twice energy initial. And then we could go and see the work done. So work done is equal to 2 times energy initial minus energy initial. So that's equal to energy initial. The amount of work that it took to move the plates apart to twice the distance that they were before took the exact amount of energy as it, the capacitor had when the distance was just d. So in essence, we've doubled the energy of the capacitor, and the work it took to do that would be equal to the initial energy the capacitor had. And so this is how we figure out what changes on the capacitor. So we know that when we change the distance, the electric field does not change, the charge doesn't change if it's not connected to anything, but we know that the voltage changes, the capacitor changes, and the energy changes. In other words, the voltage became twice as big. The capacitance was only half as big, and the energy stored is equal to twice as much. And so that's how our capacitor changes once we've charged it and disconnected it when we move the plates to twice the distance. And that gives you quite an insight on how capacitors work.